Hello and welcome back everyone to the Las Vegas Convention Center. We are here at the IBJJF Grand Prix Heavyweight Nogi Championship final match. I'm Tyler Bishop alongside me, Robert Drysdale. We've been following the action all day long and we are finally at the end, Robert. Super excited. I actually thought it was the break was going to be a lot shorter. I had announced, oh, like we're going to watch this in like 10, 20 minutes. Like, no, we got a two-hour break, which we were just discussing is... It, it kind of sucks for the competitors, I feel like, because you really cool down, you have to warm up all over again. You have, in case there's something hurting, you know, it's, it's just enough time for you to cool down and for that to really start, you know, bugging you uh, for your next match. But, you know, I think the day I was watching Joan Gabriel and Cyborg walk up, now they seem fine, they seem like, you know, confident, and other than, other than have to warm up all over again, it's all good. I'm excited about this final match, man. This is going to be long. I am Wait. too, and I, I think the break, you know, it, it alleviates questions about, you know, maybe uh, fighters being fatigued going into this 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 final. But um, it does bring up a good question. You have Roberto Cyborg here, 38 years old, against Joao Hosha, who's 28, 10, 10 years younger. You know, at, at, at 38, Robert, is it is it harder once you've kind of like had this chance to cool down? Is it harder to get the body going again, or do you think that that's maybe not as relevant as is maybe just in general how you came out of the last couple of matches? Yeah, I think that one thing that it, well, there's more trauma to your body, no doubt. I mean, so Cybrook, as he cools down, he's probably feeling the neck and the hip and the back more than a guy like Juan Gabriel, who has a lot less trauma to his body. Even though that's not just because he's old, doesn't doesn't necessarily mean he has more trauma. But chances are, Cyborg does. Especially a guy as active as Cyborg certainly has a lot of injuries. So with something like that, probably accumulates and makes the warm up more difficult. And but like he's a strong guy, man. It's not the kind of thing that's going to phase him. I think that it's just like okay, this sucks. But I mean, he's, I'm sure he's pushed through much harder things throughout his life. So I don't think this is going to hold him back in any way. Um, I, can't, I can't wait, man. I think that. Uh, I've been trying to guess like what's going to happen in the match. I've been right a couple of times, wrong a couple of times. But like I think that Juan Gabriel is going to be trying to just stand up a cyborg, and I think that's what it's going to be. It's going to be a wrestling match. I think Juan Gabriel with a little edge on the stand up, just because his counters are so solid. And um, you, you never know, man. Cyborg is an amazing, very experienced, very accomplished grappler. You go both ways, man. Tough one. Yeah, and and both of these guys have been here before. I mean, they both have. Uh, if you look at their their careers and their experiences, they both have been in there with the the, the best guys in the world. They yeah. they have victories over some of the best guys in the world, yeah. and um, they they neither of these guys are um, I guess I guess new to competing at a high level. Both of them have been around for a little while now, so I, I do think that this is um, we are seeing two very experienced competitors here in the finals. Absolutely. Uh here ahead at the Masters Worlds Las Vegas Convention Center. It's been an amazing weekend. Mm -hmm. Really good matches. Uh, I think I feel this tournament gets bigger and bigger every it's year. It's incredible how, yeah. how many different tournaments they kind of pack into this one yes. one weekend. And it's one of those things. So I think it speaks to the longevity of BJJ too. You see all these people in their 40s, 50s practicing, actively traveling. Like I don't think there are a whole bunch of sports out there that unites people like that through all these different age groups. Like yeah. I can't think. I mean, I could be wrong. I can't, might be, I can't think of any sport that does that because you see, we were watching the kids compete. You know, some of them are like what four or five years old, and then you see, you know, some men and women in their sixties yeah. competing, and now you have the Grand Prix, yeah. all in the same arena. That's, that's that's pretty cool. I don't. There's not a bunch of sports events that can do that. Like I, I don't think there's anything like that in football, basketball. No, no absolutely. Not. I mean, there was. I saw uh, Flo had posted the, the image, and I've seen it shared a lot, and it's the. Uh, the 71-year-old woman uh, against the 62-year-old uh, woman. It was a blue belt match from yesterday. No way. It's like, I, I missed it's that. It's incredible. That's uh, awesome. To see someone 71 years old uh, competing in a in a sport or martial art. It's uh, What real, a celebration, man. Yeah, it's awesome. And uh, now we're going to see something that could, it, like, to, to your point about just kind of uniting different people. You know, 71-year-old uh, grandmother, and now we're going to watch, you know, two... Elite, elite grapplers. Absolutely. This could be the final of ADCC. Yeah, it this really could, could be. be. It could be the final of, you know, uh, 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 open weight class, IPDGF World Championship, open weight class. This could be, you know, they could be going against... These guys could potentially be just about anyone in the world, man. Some very, very dominant grapplers. Uh, like you said, very experienced. Um... Joan Gabriel with the weight advantage there, a little bit taller, a little bit heavier. And I think I think with Hosha, one of the things that um, ha has has dogged him for a while is he, he was never able to get over that hump and 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 best Bouchesha. And I think other than 
you know, he, he could lay claim to maybe being the best grappler on the planet with the exception of Bouchesh for a long time. But like you said, uh, a, a recent victory over him in the Gi. And um, I think, you know, he's he's a guy that's proven to us that he's he's getting better, he's improving. Look, wrestling has really looked solid this week. And so, yeah. you know, I think heading into ADCC, you know, $40,000 on the line, he's looking to prove something here today. Absolutely. And uh, you're right with Bouchesh. He's been so close to beating Bouchesh so many times. And, like, he's finally getting his moment in the sun. He has the, the chance to win here, $40,000 today against Cyborg, ADCC Openweight Champion. And this is going to be great, man. This is going to be, like as I mentioned this earlier today, this is a good warm-up for ADCC, which I can't wait for. I think, I think when you look at Cyborg, you, you ask the question of, when you've seen him, even recently, when I've seen him at his best, he's as, he's as good as any other grappler on planet Earth, can, can be the champion of just about any tournament that you would possibly put him in. And the question becomes, you know, at, at 38 years old, like when, when, when does someone start slowing down? And he, today he's looked, he's looked as good as he's ever looked. I mean, the yeah, back half of that match against Barbosa was incredible. I could barely tell the difference between Cyborg now and 10 years ago. It looked like, you know, it's, he's managed to stay healthy, which is good for him, and uh, active. Probably not as active as Jerome Gabriel Rocha. But, I mean, that's explainable. We talked about how busy a guy like Cyborg would be, not just with training, but, like, managing the gym and, you know, uh, uh, affiliation system and all that. But he, uh, um, very, very dominant performance, man. Like, he, his match with Lucas Barbosa, I really thought Lucas had him. And he came back, and, wow, that was probably my favorite match of the, of the day. It was definitely one of the most exciting. And, and right as we say that we're underway here, 9 minutes, 35 seconds left to go, and at the end of this one, someone's going to walk away with $40,000. Which is pretty significant when you think about that kind of prize money for no-gi grappling. Oh, and imagine for João Gabriel Rocha, who lives in Brazil, the exchange rate is like 4 to 1 right now. So that's a lot of money in Brazil, my friend. You know, I mean, I'm sure Cyborg is happy to win $40,000, but that means a lot less in the U.S. than it would mean in Brazil. So that's, um, yeah big moment here for both these guys it's a big opportunity i think and it speaks to the development and evolution of uh jujitsu in general but also no gi jujitsu that there are these types of opportunities for some of these special athletes yeah it's deserving man like i feel that jujitsu has always been a practitioner sport which i prefer I, I like it like that uh but i also like to see these guys uh, get paid you know it's it's uh, this definitely something that they've earned. So this was a question of, you know, would this match take place on the feet or would uh, Cyborg potentially uh, choose to elect to, uh, to play the guard here? And, and so far, your prediction earlier was correct in that they're, they're working from the feet here from the collar tie. Yeah, I, I can see this being um, like a wrestling match, through, you know, through and throughout. I think, you know, towards the end, they're going to really start pushing, unless someone scores something earlier, right? But if this continues like this for the next five, six minutes, I think the last two minutes, they're both going to... It's going to be like Barboza and, uh, and uh, Cyborg was for the second half of the match, you know, back and forth. It got really excited once Barboza got scored that negative on. He was given that negative. Like, the match just changed completely. And uh, I'm hoping to see something similar right now. I really, I really want to see these guys go to war. Both of these guys have, have shown today, and I think shown in the past, to have, have really spectacular... Uh, uh, counter wrestling, counter, counter stand up, call it what you will, uh, both of these guys have, have chained together really nice counters off the takedowns today. Absolutely. But see, about John Gabriel Hosha, this is what's kind of like I'm a little worried about is he's not the guy to take the initiative a lot with takedowns. He, he, he loves to counter, and he's yeah. one of the best at it when it comes to the, the counter aspect of, of wrestling. But Cyborg is more well-rounded I feel like in a sense I can see him like taking the initiative yeah and that might give Cyborg an edge in case this goes decision like he's just gonna try more um, well let's see you know one of the things I noticed in the match with Barbosa and, and where Barbosa was able to get the lead on Cyborg early was was he, he really set the pace and set the tone of the match to start with and uh, you know we talked about Cyborg getting warm and kind of you know getting more aggressive as the match wore on it 
if you had made me guess, I'd say it looks like right now that they're fighting the pace at which Cyborg would like to fight. Yeah, it's, you're, you're exactly right. Like Cyborg, like he changed completely after he got taken down that, that second time by Barboza. And um, yeah, maybe something similar is going to happen here. But we know that Cyborg can be very aggressive. And it's just like one of those things. He's, they're both studying each other. They're not, you know, they know that it's going to get crazy pretty soon. So kind of conserving their energy. And you put more on the line when that happens. Like the, 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 you have so much more to gain and lose the closer you leave it to the end, right, when the score is even. But they also have to worry about the penalties. You know, they both got a penalty each. One of the, the corner refs just gave them both a penalty, but the other, the central ref and the, um, and the other corner ref didn't agree. But I can see them getting the penalty again soon unless they start switching gears. Do you, which of these two, when you see Cyborg shooting in here, wh which of these two uh, competitors do you think has the most tools on the feet? So I, I guess which one has the most uh, has the most diversity in the in the different forms of attacks that they may have? In their I'm given overall. I mean, when it comes to diversity of attacks, I'm going to go with Cyborg. But I'm giving Jean Gabriel the advantage. I'm, one is the weight. Two, like Jean is shown to be very, very good at defending takedowns and the countering from there, like in the past against a lot of competitors. In fact. Um, that's why I'm giving him the egg. Like, that, that, there we go. Nice shot here. But, like, you don't see, you can see, like, he doesn't shoot very often. And you, you, you see that his takedowns don't, most of the time they're counters. They're not, he not, doesn't initiate a lot of what I'm saying. Um, you see. It, which would kind of, like I said, if this goes decision, it could give Cyborg, um, you know, uh, something for the, the, the judges to uh, consider when it comes to Cyborg giving Cyborg shooting away. in a single leg. Nice connection there by Cyborg. So Cyborg trying to finish. Good single. Yeah. Draw Gabriel. But see, this stuff himself. counts, though, because that's not an advantage on the score. But when it goes decision, the judges are looking at this. They're going to go, okay, but there was that one attempt. Like yeah. he's, because it means he's being more aggressive, right? Like, in MMA, if you shoot on someone 10 times and your opponent defends, the person who defends is being rewarded points. They reward defense. BJJ works different. We reward offense. So if I keep trying to take you down over and over and over and you keep defending, I win at the end because I'm trying harder, right? I'm not, whereas MMA had like that opposite mentality, which is weird to me. Like you, get, you defend a shot and you get rewarded for that. And you got to be rewarded in offense, in, in my opinion. But um, in, in Jiu-Jitsu, this, this could be a way for Cyborg to win in case, you know, nothing happens. Yeah, it's been the most significant, uh, significant uh, moment in the match thus, thus far. And, you know, I, I noticed earlier Hosha had a, uh, he had a headband down, and it looks like uh, it's, it's maybe uh, was covering a bandage he's got on his forehead, maybe, maybe from a match earlier today. Yeah, I didn't see anything. I mean, I saw him walking in with uh, uh, his head cover, but I, I, I didn't see anything earlier. Maybe a cut on the forehead somewhere. Yeah, I didn't notice anything in the match that, you know, there wasn't a significant amount of bleeding or anything like that that happened earlier. A lot of hand fighting by both these athletes. Yeah, both, both work, that cyborg shooting in once again here. Both working from the collar tie, and sometimes after a number of collar ties, Robert, you know, guys get into a certain pace, and then one guy will, will switch it up and almost catch the guy yes, off guard with something that, new. that's a great, like you can see that it slows down because they start getting tired, and there's that one guy that just goes, he changes the pace, right? He changes, like, the the rhythm of the music and they go from like you know you know kind of just flow and cruising resting whatever and then you see one of them be very explosive and that's when you know you really surprise your opponent could be scoring too in the in the last match robert the cyborg really sort of started to kind of pick it up after he had he'd scored a takedown and he, and he almost like built off that momentum and i kind of wonder if uh if we can get some action going in this match if maybe something similar won't happen where uh, Cyborg might build off the momentum of some of the action. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, Cyborg, like, go, if, if this is going to be anything like the, the Lucas Hosha, uh, Lucas Barboza match, it's going to be, well, right about now, two and a half minutes left. Like, like right about now, they expect these guys to really start switching gears. Yeah. But, yeah, you see, you see like, Jean is not as comfortable shooting as he is defending yeah. shots. You know, and that, in this scenario, is kind of working against him. And you can tell both both of these athletes are very uh, cognizant of the fact that they're both good counter wrestlers or counter fighters because Cyborg there as he just took that last shot, you could tell he, he popped his head up really quickly and you could tell he was he was almost anticipating Hosha maybe countering right off of his shot. I agree. 
And not a lot of action. Looks like this is going to go. I hope this doesn't go decision. I really hope something happens. Because, like, hey, decisions is one of those things. I always feel like it's not the result we want to see. No one wants to see a decision, right? It's, it's, a, it's a complicated one. You just, sometimes it's going to be even. You know, especially when you've got $40,000 on, on the, the line here. Exactly. I, I don't think yeah. either of these guys probably want that. And they've got about 90 seconds left to uh, to define this one way or the other. It is tied up with a penalty each with one minute and 27 seconds left to go. All right. Front headlock there by João. Let's see if he can use it for something. It's followed by Cyborg's takedown attempt. It's hard to, as you wear yourself out, it gets harder and harder to get underneath your opponent on a good double. Hosha may be looking to to pick an opportunity here to score. And he goes to the, he, he, he looked like he wanted, and Cyborg Whoa. here now looking to pass. Wow. Hosha took Let's a risk see. here at the end, and Cyborg now looking to capitalize. That's good for Cyborg, man. I'm surprised John did that. It's the thing that they could look at as like John taking the initiative to do something, and maybe like, okay, but now this gives Cyborg the opportunity to be very aggressive, even if it doesn't pass. It. Just that right there. Who, uh, it, it looks like he's, yeah, the, you know, just winning, even though he's not even really getting close to passing, just by being more aggressive, it turns the referees in his favor. Yeah, and I think from that front headlock, Joao Gabriel maybe was looking to do a, a throw. I, I don't know that he was thinking about the, 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 the guillotine, but yeah. Cyborg immediately trying to capitalize. As they I come back up to the feet here with I 10 seconds left yeah. to go. I never said how the judges are going to look at this, because he pulled guard, took, took the initiative, stands back up. It shows that he's looking for the fight. But he didn't come close to doing anything from guard, so and wow, Hosha, tough one. Yeah, Hosha trying tough to work one. in there at the end. Um, Tyler, you go first. I, I, I think that if I had to guess, I'd say the referees are going to give it to Cyborg and Unanimous. Yeah, decision. I agree. I think I think Cyborg's got this. Um, just Maybe. basically, he had better attempts. Better attempts. Yeah. It ended up in some better positions, um, yeah. more offensive positions. Good for him. Wow, I'm happy for Cyborg. Obviously a very close match when you've got the scoreboard to dead even. And let's see who the referees are going to make $40,000 richer here today. Unanimous. And it is unanimous decision to yes. reverse those Cyborg. Good for him. The oldest wow. competitor in the bracket is going to take this one home. And he adds to his already storied and illustrious career. As you mentioned before, ADCC Openweight Champion, and now your 2019 IBJJF Nogi Heavyweight Grand Prix Champion, Roberto Great Cyborg. win. Another, another win to a uh, stellar career. This is not the only big win of his career. Cyborg's has many over the years, and this just adds to it. And, and def you know, we've been talking about storylines heading into ADCC, and this certainly makes things more intriguing because I think we've looked at several people in this bracket, uh, Gaudio, uh, Hosha, um, you know, Fajera, for example, a guy, a guy that was very impressive today, that, that heading into ADCC, you look at and you go, these guys could really make some noise, but then you have someone like Roberto Cyborg that, that is able to come out on top here today, and you look at and you say, hey, maybe, you know, we can't write this guy off just yet, and... Um, like you said earlier, he's looked as good as ever. No, I, I, I guess, like I said earlier, I can't tell the difference between Cyborg now and 10 years ago. You know, he's, he's really, really impressive that he has, you know, been able to stay on top of the game for so long. And, um, wow, super happy for him, man. He deserves it. He looks, he looks like he put a lot of time and motion into this. It's not just another yeah. tournament. I think he had in the back of his mind, like, this is going to be my day and like he really put in a good camp for this and really prepared and very emotionally invested you know put it like that i think for example some of the replacements were probably less emotionally invested some of yeah. the new guys like vitor Hugo and trator they're walking in they're going i get a chance to compete against my idols I got nothing I'm, to lose. I'm an ibjf's grand prix exactly i got nothing to lose everything to win and they, they don't walk in there with that same emotional invested that someone like cyborg would have or john gabriel Hosha. they walk in they're going I want this. You yeah. know, this is mine. Like, I'm going to walk in there and win. Everyone's an obstacle in the way to my success. So you can see how happy, truly happy he is. And 
I, honestly, I will say this. I think, of course, he's happy about the money. I think he's really happier about the accomplishment yeah. of overcoming. A bunch of guys are younger and who have everything to I mean, He's got nothing to prove. He could have yeah, easily retired. Well, absolutely nothing to prove. Yeah, here he is. So I think the money is really like a... It's a, like it's a bonus. A, it's, it's like a nice bonus. It but is I like think a nice if, bonus. I, if you asked him, which one are you? Is it the, the, the trophy or the check you're happy about? I think I would, I think you'd say the trophy. Yeah, and I, and I agree with you, Robert. Maybe speak to that motivation a little bit more. It's something we were talking about uh, offline a little bit before this. But just the how, how much money really goes into motivating some of these athletes versus really the, the, the accomplishment and then just the, the competition and the reputation that's tied to uh, their performances and things along those lines. 